We have a house in the middle of the jungle that is having severe power issues. Trips instantly. What the hell could be under that? Outlet in the main bedroom, blocked by a mini fridge, a ton of junk, TV on top of it. Apparently this house has some leaks. It doesn't really look too bad. Whew. There should be an outlet somewhere behind there. I gotta get out of here. I don't judge anyone. I have some pretty freaking cool stuff to show you here. A well shared by five different lots. This is one of our most complicated installs from the past. This ancient PLC. This big Goliath system with a tiny little Achilles heel. Hey, welcome to my video. Hawaii is home to not only some of the most beautiful landscapes, warmest and kindest people, and most interesting wildlife. It's also home to some of the most awful, horrifying wiring. It's almost Christmas here and you wouldn't be able to tell because it's sunny and hot. We're gonna go and check out a house in the middle of the jungle that is having severe power issues. After that, we're gonna be checking out a five-way split shared off-grid catchment system with some extremely awesome, interesting, and slightly antiquated control wiring. Will I be able to get this poor family up and running before Christmas? Or will they be asking Santa Claus this year for a new off-grid system? Okay, full disclosure. I know why you're here. I know why you clicked on this. That visit is definitely going in the second half of this video. If you'll bear with me, let's have some vegetables before dessert, yeah? The hoarder place was the first place I visited, but I actually have something really freaking cool to show you. So I hope you'll stick around. But this is a well that is shared by five different lots that are all completely off grid. So what needs to happen is when one person's tank needs water, it needs to switch over to that specific person's power so that it's using their solar. And then some solenoids in the ground here need to switch over so that it fills their tank. This is one of our most complicated installs from the past and is a little bit antiquated, but very fascinating. So check this out. At the center of this monolith is this ancient PLC, one of the earlier PLCs, and it's so old that we don't even have the firmware or even the operating system to plug into it to read it. So this will stand forever as an unknown monolithic relic. But we do have a roadmap to see what it's supposed to say, and we do have its notification lights that are supposed to tell you what it's thinking. The customer's problem is lot two here has had to come and manually fill his tank for the last five months. Started having issues five months ago. He swapped out his float switches. I'm not as concerned about that. Let's look into the wiring here. Now, all of these lights are the inputs that we're getting. So for instance, we have one right there on that little auxiliary module. And in this case, one is lot two off, which means the lot two off switch is triggered, which means that his tank is probably full right now. Now, I didn't ask him that earlier when I got here. I don't know if his tank is in a state of needing water or is full, but it looks from here that it's full. Now we have 1.7 and 1.7 on, I know this is really difficult to read. This is a really freaking weird wiring diagram, but basically off over here is fill three. That means that lot three is actually trying to fill right now. That's the first red flag that says maybe lot three could be in a permanent fill state, which means it's hogging the well. Although there are emergency floats to when it gets below a certain amount, there's a fill, and then there's actually an e-fill for when it gets even lower, which should bypass it, but there could be issues with that too. I'm sure this all looks like Chinese to you guys, but we have 1.5 and 7 here. They're simply just indication that the manual switch is set to pump 2, but that the system is set to auto. So that's totally normal. You can actually see that over here. See manual fill set to tank two, but it doesn't matter because it's an auto. That's because bros had to fill his tank. And so we set it to which tank 
you want to fill and then you hit auto and then you press the start button. I'm just trying to weed out things here by seeing what the PLC is looking at without having to dive too much into the logic of the PLC. Two things that are interesting. We actually installed this tank roughly five to seven months ago because this lot over here had a new owner moving in. It's definitely a red flag that he started having issues around that time. Let's see what we got in the tank. Oh, I don't want to get my ants. Okay, so I off and ooh, that's their on. This is their on, so this should be their fill switch. Let's see what happens if we do that. Looks like we're starting to fill. I wonder what light is on while this is hanging. Let's go see, because I wonder if one of these floats is wired the incorrect way. Leave it hanging like that. We'll let this fill for just a couple minutes. Oh. Interesting, now 1.7 is off, but the tank is filling. Does that mean it's wired the incorrect way? This is fill. Power is, that is actually open now. And then we have power on. This is a normally open contact, so it's actually off now. So why is it filling with it off? All right, we need to look into this a little bit. Okay, I put the fill float back in so it's in the floating position. And now I'm putting the off float up. So lot three's odd light that I was seeing there, it might be a red herring. I was reading through the PLC program, which I didn't want to have to do. And I'm pretty conclusive that it's an issue with the customer's float switches. And here's why. I'm gonna go through this really fast. This PLC, in order for the tank to fill, these things need to be true. You got your tank to call. It's normally open in the programming, which means if it gets a signal, then that closes. So 4.2 right here, you follow it over and you get fill two. Makes sense, right? If the fill float closes, then as long as all of this stuff is closed, then it will turn on this contactor which will trigger an interlock and it'll lock this in so that once the call float opens back up as the tank is filling, it'll be interlocked in so it'll stay closed. Now, what could stop it from running would be these outputs from the PLC. These are either five of the control contactors for the various lots are closed. So normally this is closed, but if one of the other lots contactor is closed, then this will be open and it'll prevent it from filling. With the exception of the emergency fill, that kind of bypasses some things. 4.7, 2.0, 1.4, 1.1. Those are all on here and they lead, I'll just save you some time, they lead to the various floats for the different lots. So as long as all those are true, if the off float is closed, then this will be open and it'll prevent it from running. In other words, the tank fills up and that float slowly lifts up and then it closes. It shows on the light on the PLC up there and then this opens and it stops it from running and it turns off the interlock. That's a key part too. So then this is back to open and we're back to our starting place. We will go take a look inside their tank first. We've taken the low float and flipped it up. This float doesn't seem to be doing anything. Even when we flipped this up, Ah, gosh. 4.1 here, which, which tells the tank not to fill, is on, even as you can see both of these floats are hanging. When I lift this one up, if, if it was wired opposite, should make it start, but nothing changes when I flip this up. The lights have not changed, so neither of those floats are doing anything. We have the float switch JB open, and we have no voltage DC coming to here. This is our 24 volts out that we confirmed earlier. I'm at this middle point where it transitions from the tank conduit, basically to include the feeder and the control wires. I did get 28 volts to one of these wires. So I'm just gonna cut the crap here and replace these splices. The splices are probably bad. We do not have voltage on any of these wires. What the hell? 28 between black and red. There's gotta be like a conduit smash and a wire to wire short in that conduit. So we just gotta pull new wires in there. If you are a handyman or just do it yourself, please never do this. As you can see, this conduit is completely flexible. It goes in here. Oh, chase. Four inches underground. Wow. 
I don't know what they were thinking. And it comes up to here, pokes through the wall. And we're up to about six to 10 nineties at this point. And it pokes out of the wall and it comes along here. It was on straps, but look, they, they left only one screw in the strap so that you could easily disconnect it like an extension cord. And then it goes into there. So I've been trying to pull these new conductors in, but they're possibly severed somewhere. So they could be squished for all I know. Again, if you're a handyman, please don't do that crap. Take a trench, install PVC conduit under the ground. Use flexible pipe from the ground to the tank because the tank can expand and contract with the sun. But once you get into the ground, you should be 100% PVC or whatever conduit running all the way back. Because then what happens is you dig it four feet into the ground and the wire gets smushed and it gets all messed up and then the poor customer has to pay for me to come and basically tell them that their whole freaking conduit needs to be redone before they can get their floats back. Well, looks like this will be a return visit after all. <sighs> Here we go. Okay, so this trips instantly and that's probably causing a bunch of the outlets to not work. So let's take this apart. Doubt anything's wrong in here. It's probably all at the, one of the plugs is doing it. Oh, jeez. check for continuity to ground. So there's the ground bus and here's the tripped breaker. And we have 2.2 ohms. So we have a um, direct short circuit or short to ground somewhere in this line. That's live. So that's not part of the problem. What the hell could be under that? Mm -hmm. Direct short to ground. Seems like that could cause it. Okay, we got continuity. From... Okay, with the outlet removed. Ooh. We still have continuity to hot. From ground to hot. And on this side. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just curious if that breaker will hold now. Oh, it does hold. Yeah. I found another outlet in the main bedroom, but it's blocked by a mini fridge and a ton of junk and all the junk has a TV on top of it. <sighs> Anyways, I'm giving the tenants some time to move all that stuff out of the way. I don't know if I'll be able to get any footage in there. Honestly, I don't even know if it's legal to show you all the footage. I'm not revealing locations or people, but it's just sad how some people can live like this. I'm not showing a ton of footage, but it's really bad. A straight up hoarder nightmare. I'm gonna see if I have an extra outlet to replace the first one in the bathroom, which I probably don't. And then it looks like I'll be replacing the one on the other side too. I'm praying to God I don't have to go under the house to fix anything. <laughs> I kind of doubt that'll be the case. We'll see. This is all I found in my truck right now. So I guess I'll put this in and we'll come back to do cover plates. For anyone who doesn't know, <clears throat> we're not really residential electricians. We do resi trouble calls, but this is our customer because we service their well in the back which is its own crazy story. 
So that's why I don't carry outlets and Romex and crap on my truck. I ain't got time for that. Okay. It is wet. We wet back here. It... Oh, God. oh, man. So apparently this house has some leaks. They just cleaned up the... They just mopped it up a little bit, but it was soaking wet all behind here. Or well, I wonder if it came from here. That could be the case. So this is probably totally cooked here. The outlet seems dry. Okay, and doesn't really look too bad. I'm gonna take it off and see if I still have the same short. I think I did the last one. I'll keep them all separated. I'll turn the breaker on. Okay, it holds. We'll try the same thing here. Okay, let's hope for the best. Oh, shoot. Okay, so that's not the problem either. If NAC code applied in this case, then there should be an outlet somewhere behind there. I mean, I haven't tested it, but this one honestly looks fine too. Oh, man. Oh, man. We hold when these are disconnected. I'm thinking of just drawing the line there, capping the load side continuation of the circuit off, and uh, just plugging the outlet into there, and then replacing all the other outlets. Because whatever's causing this problem is completely buried. So I'm just going to add this outlet back on, I guess. Okay, just leave it out for now. Okay, they should hold. Let's see. Yep, nice. Mm -hmm. I gotta get out of here. All right, moving on. Wow, so that was a pretty crazy job. I was just glad I was able to get them up and working. That house honestly needs to be torn down. Just so people know, I don't judge anyone for the way they live their lives or the circumstances that have led up to them being, or the history that has led up to them being in whatever circumstance they're currently in. In fact, I feel kind of bad for them. Hawaii contains quite the contrast between the ultra rich and the very poor. If you made it all the way through, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. I have many more pretty neat technician and job site videos that I think you'll like. Lots of troubleshooting, electrical education, control systems, problem solving, and occasionally crazy stuff like this. If you've been watching my channel for a while and you're one of my diehards, that's the people who watch the videos all the way through, then I'd encourage you to check out my Patreon where you can gain early access to my videos. And with one subscription, you can even call me live on my show. So that is, yes, in the middle of an episode while I'm recording, you can call me, ask questions, try to be funny, pretend you're an annoying customer, whatever you wanna do. All of this goes towards helping me improve the quality of my videos and lets me bring more entertaining content towards you. So thanks again for watching. Share this with your friends, like the video. Till next time.